in the world of software development, mastering JavaScript gives you the power to create the future, whether it's building seamless web experiences, scalable backend systems, or powerful mobile apps. As one of the most powerful and versatile programming languages, JavaScript continues to dominate the tech industry. It's not just a language for front-end developers anymore. It's a core skill for full-stack engineers, back-end developers, and even mobile developers using frameworks like React Native. With JavaScript playing such a central role in modern development, it's no surprise that technical interviews often revolve around the knowledge and practical understanding of it. Whether you're preparing for a role as a junior developer or interviewing for a senior level engineering position, you can expect a wide range of JavaScript interview questions and answers to come your way. These questions can range from basics like variable declarations and data types to more complex topics such as closures, hosting, scope sync, promises and event loop. In fact, JavaScript interviews today often test both theoretical knowledge as well as real-world applications. You will be expected not only to explain what something does, but why it behaves that way and how to use it effectively in projects. Many developers struggle with JavaScript interviews because they approach them by simply memorizing definitions or syntax. However, interviews are designed to assess deeper understanding of how you can reason through a tricky question about closures. Can you optimize a loop or debug asynchronous behavior? This is where thoroughly curated set of JavaScript interview questions and answers become an essential tool in your preparation. In this guide, we have gathered some of the most frequently asked insightful Java interview questions, complete with detailed explanation and real-world examples. Each answer is designed to help you not only understand the concept, but also communicate it clearly something interviewers highly value. We've also categorized the questions into different difficult levels, which is beginners, intermediate and advanced, so you can build your confidence step by step. Whether you're just standing in your JavaScript journey or refining your skills for your senior developer role, this guide will serve you as a roadmap to help you prepare efficiently and effectively. By practicing these questions, you'll not only improve your chances of passing the interview, but also deepen your understanding of JavaScript, which will benefit you long after you have landed the job. Clean concept, logical thinking, and confident communication, these are the pillars of success in technical interviews. So if you're aiming to make a strong impression and stand out in your next technical round, let's dive into essential JavaScript interview questions and answer that can set you apart from the competition. Before we commence, if you're ready to take your developmental skills to next level, our Microsoft AI-powered full-stack developer program is designed to make you job-ready in just six months. Imagine being able to build dynamic, scalable user interface using React, Node.js, Express, MongoDB, while also leveraging cutting-edge AI tools like ChatGPT and Copilot to supercharge your code. And here's the best part. You will earn an official certificate from Microsoft which will give your resume a significant boost. The program is designed for people who want to get hands-on with coding and understanding full process of deploying a modern web app. Plus, if you have access to Git portfolio, which is perfect for showcasing your work to potential employers. One of the best parts of the program is the AI-powered job assistance. You'll get help optimizing your resume and LinkedIn profile, mock interviews to prepare for your real thing, and even custom job opportunities tailored to your skill set. The demand for AI-powered full-stack developers is growing rapidly, and companies are looking for people who can combine traditional coding with cutting-edge AI tools. So are you ready to build your future? Enroll now and take the first step towards becoming a Microsoft Certified AI-powered full-stack developer. The course link is given in the description box below and in the pinned comments. Before moving forward, I request you guys do not forget to hit that subscribe button and click on the bell icon so you don't miss any future updates from Simply Learn. So let's get started. So let's start with a beginner level JavaScript interview questions and answer. The first question is what is JavaScript? 
JavaScript is a lightweight interpreted programming language used to create dynamic and interactive content on web pages. It runs the client side but also can be used on the server side via Node.js. The second question is what is the difference between var, let and constant? Var is functions code which is can be redeclared and updated. Whereas let is block scoped, which is can be updated but not redeclared. Whereas constant is block scoped, which is cannot be updated or even redeclared. The next question is what are data types in JavaScript? The first one being primitive, which includes strings, numbers, boolean, undefined, null symbol. Whereas we have non primitives, which is object, array, or a function. The next question is, what is the difference between double equals and triple equals? Double equals compares values only, whereas triple equals compares both value and its type. The next question is, what is NAN in JavaScript? NAN stands for note a number. It indicates that a value is not a valid number. For example, it can be any ABC which returns an NAN value. The next question is, how do you check the type of variable? Using type of operators, example type of hello string. The next question is what is a function in JavaScript? In JavaScript, functions are the first class objects because they can be passed to other functions, returned from functions and assigned to variables and properties. They can also have properties and methods just like any other object. The next question is what is an array? In JavaScript, an array is ordered collection of values, also known as elements. Arrays are fundamental data structures used to store and manage multiple pieces of data efficiently. For example, here a data set of 1, 2, 3 is stored in an array called ARR. The next question is what is DOM in JavaScript? The document object model in JavaScript is a programming interface for web documents. It represents the page structure as a logical tree where each node in the tree is an object representing a part of the document like elements, attributes or even text. This allows JavaScript to interact with and manipulate the content, structure and even the style of the web page after it has loaded in the browser. The next question is what are comments in JavaScript? JavaScript comments can be used to explain JavaScript code and to make it more readable. JavaScript comments can also be used to prevent execution when testing alternative code. So for example, we have single line comment and also multi line comment. Next, we'll move on to intermediate level of question and answers. The first question here is what is closure? A closure is a function that remembers its outer variables even after the outer function has finished executing. So here's an example we have. The next question is what is hoisting? Hoisting in JavaScript mechanism where declaration of variables and functions are conceptually moved to the top of their scope before code execution. This allows you to use functions and variables before they declare in the code through the behavior difference between var and let constant. The next question is what are arrows function? Arrow function also known as fat arrow functions are a concise syntax introduced in ACMA script 6 which is ES6 for writing function expressions in JavaScript. They provide a shorter way to define functions compared to traditional function expression and have distinct behavior regarding this keyword. The next question is explain event building and capturing. Event capturing is where an event travels down the DOM tree from the windows to the target element while the event building is when the event travels back up from the target to the window. Both are phases of the event propagation and they happen in sequence. Capturing first followed by bubbling with the target element in between. Capturing is a tickle down phase and bubbling is a tickle up phase. Now the next question is what is the difference between null and undefined? Null is an intentional empty value explicitly assigned by developers while undefined means a variable has been declared but has not been assigned a value yet. In short, null is a deliberate absence of value whereas undefined is an automatic unintentional absence of value. The next question is what is the difference between synchronous and asynchronous code? 
Synchronous code runs tasks subsequently, one after the other, blocking the next task until the current one is finished. While asynchronous code allows the task to run independently without waiting, enabling the program to contribute executing other operations. Synchronous is like single lane road where traffic must wait for the car in the front whereas asynchronous is like a highway with multiple lanes allowing cars to proceed in parallel. The next question is what are the promises in JavaScript? In JavaScript, a promise is an object representing the eventual completion of an asynchronous operation and its resulting value. It provides a more structured and manageable way to handle asynchronous code compared to traditional callback functions helping to avoid callback hell. Here's a simple example. The next question is what is deconstructing? Deconstructing in JavaScript is a powerful feature introduced in ES6 that allows for extracting values from arrays of properties from objects and assigning them to distinct variables in a concise and readable way. It simplifies the process of working with data structured by providing a more direct syntax for assessing their contents. Here's a small example. The next question is explain the concept of spread operator. The spread operator denoted by three consecutive dots is a feature in JavaScript that allows an iterable to be expanded into its individual elements or properties. Some of the example are constant array is equal to one, two, three, and we have given here constant new array, which is a spread operator array four comma five. The next question is what is the difference between map and for each? The map and for each methods in JavaScript are both used to iterate over arrays, but they differ significantly in their return values and intended use cases. Map returns a new array whereas for each just iterates without returning anything. Let's move on to the advanced level question. The first question is what is event loop in JavaScript? The event loop in JavaScript is a fundamental mechanism that enables asynchronous operation and ensures that a single threaded nature of JavaScript engine does not block the execution of the program. It is a continuous process that monitors and calls the stack and task queues including the callback queue and micro task queue, executing tasks when the call stack is empty. Async wait is a modern way to write asynchronous code that looks and behaves more like synchronous code, making it easier to read and manage. It uses two keywords which is async to declare an asynchronous function that always returns a promise and a way to pause the function's execution and wait for a promise to resolve before continuing. This pattern simplifies complex synchronous operations such as network request by avoiding deeply nested callbacks or the dot then and catch chains of promises. The next question is what is prototype inheritance? Prototype inheritance is a mechanism where objects can inherit properties and methods from other objects through a prototype chain. Instead of using classes, objects, this system directly inherited from other objects when a property or method is accessed, the object is checked first and then if it's not found, the search moves on to the prototype, continuing up the chain until the property is found or the end of the change is reached. The next question is, what is currying? Currying is breaking down a function with multiple arguments into sequence of function, each taking one argument. The next question is, what is memoization? Memoization is an optimization technique that stores the results of expensive function calls and reuses the cached results for the same inputs, avoiding redundant calculations. This is particularly effective for recurring algorithms that repeatedly solve the same subproblems and can significantly improve performance by reducing execution time. It's like remembering the answer to a math problem so you don't have to solve it again from scratch if it comes up later. The next question is what are modules in JavaScript? Modules are used to split the code into reusable pieces. There's a given example. The next question is what are generators in JavaScript? In JavaScript, generators are special functions that can be paused and reused during their execution. Unlike regular functions that run to completion, a return single value generator function can yield multiple values over time, pausing their execution at each yield statement and resuming when requested. And here's an example. 
The next question is explain deep versus shallow copy. A shallow copy occurs when you copy the reference of an object to a new variable. In this process, only the top level properties are copied while nested objects or arrays still reference the original memory location. A deep copy on the other hand creates a complete independent copy of the object including all the nested objects or arrays. This ensures that changes made to one object do not affect the other. The next question is what is debouncing and throttling? Debouncing and throttling are techniques used to optimize the performance of function triggered by events that occur frequently such as scrolling, resizing or typing. They help in managing how often these functions executed which can improve user experience and system performance. The last question is what is the difference between call and apply and even bind? Call invokes functions immediately with the argument list, whereas apply evokes functions immediately with arguments array. In case of bind, it returns a new functions with bound context. So that's it up on JavaScript interview questions with answers. If you like this video, do hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and keep learning with Simply Learn.